So now it's time to implement JWT in our project. The thing is when you want to configure JWT in the project, in the Spring Boot project, there are a lot of classes and interfaces to work with. We have to get multiple layers. Uh, the thing is, see, we have to do two things. One, whenever user logged in, you have to basically send a token generated on the server to the client. And then when a client sends some other request, they have to send this token with them to the server. And on the server side, we have to write the token and based on that, you have to send the response. Looks like a less number of steps, but then when you say you have to generate the token, it involves itself a lot of steps. When you say you want to validate a token, it will take a lot of steps. Now, you might be thinking for a simple project, as I mentioned before, for a simple project, it will do a lot of settings. See, security is very important and you will do this configuration only once. I don't know why I'm saying this every time as a disclaimer, but I have seen the mindset of people who are learning Spring Security. They are like, hey, you know, I'm building an application to add two numbers and then uh, the amount of time I'm spending on security is much more than the feature. But when you build big applications, you are spending more time on the features than on security. But if you do security properly, that's what you get. Less time security, more time development, but do it properly. And now we are going to divide entire JWT implementation into multiple stages. In this video, let's do the first step, setting up the project so that you can work with JWT. See, we are going to use a lot of classes to generate those tokens, write it those tokens, and these are not part of Spring Security by default. We have to add those libraries for JWT. That's one. Next, we have to create layers so that when you send a request, request goes to the Spring Security, but then at this point we were working with, if I go to Spring yeah, Security Config, uh, we are asking our authentication provider to talk to database to verify it, and we still want to do that. Now, since I want to use JWT now, we have to add one more layer. It is there behind the scene, even if you're not using JWT. Till this point, we have used authentication provider, but when the request goes, that object of authentication goes to the server, and there is something called Authentication Manager, which calls Authentication Provider. And by default, Authentication Manager is handling this stuff behind the scene. And now we want to say, hey, I'm working with this token system and let me handle it. So we have to work with Authentication Manager as well. So which dependency I'm talking about? So what I will do is I will go back to my POM file here. So let's set up this project once. And here we have to add two more dependencies. So one is for the JWT API. And to do that, uh, we will go to our favorite website, which is MVN repository. And here, search for JWT API. And this is what we need. So if I click on this, this is the API we have to work with. Now, which version looks stable? So 12.3, because it has a maximum usage, so I will use that. Or maybe this one also works, 12.5. So let's get this. And based on when you're watching this, you can pick up any version, make sure that it is used a lot. And now I'll copy this without the ad, of course, and go back here and paste. Next, so this is just an API, right? Of course, I have to do, I have to do Maven reload, but we need two more uh, dependency. See, we have got the API, not the implementation. So you have to take both. They give you an option of API and implementation difference so that you can use any other implementation if you want. But I want to use the JWT in, uh, implementation. So I will just say impl and this is the one. So this implements the API, go for the same version. And as you can see, they have found a vulnerability. So learning purpose, this works. But then if you are implementing this in your project, check with your company's policies, what kind of uh, security they are implementing. And they and your team, the security compliance team, they will have their own set of uh, APIs available. So I'm going to use this and I'll copy this and paste it here. So we got the implementation. Sometime you also need a Jackson converter. I think that's optional, just try it out without the Jackson converter. If it works, it works, but I will get that here. So JW, JWT Jackson, I know there are a lot of J's here but let's take it, same version. And you know, version plays a major role. Sometimes when you have a different version, it might create some issues. So stick to the specific version. So do the Maven reload, it will download all the dependencies. As you can see, it is doing it here. Took some time, but it should be here soon. Yeah, we got it. Now, once you got dependency, let's do this stuff. The first thing you have to do is, now we have to make sure that the authentication manager is something which you are handling. So and when you say you want to handle something, we have to create a bean for it. So let's create a bean for authentication manager. So if you say authentication, uh, we got provider, but I want manager. Yeah, authentication manager. And 
like some application manager. Now question arises: How will you give the object of this? You just have to get the object and return. The way we have done here for the authentication provider, we got DAO authentication provider. But here, uh, either we have to look for a class or some other way. Now, if you because if you see authentication manager, it's an interface, so we can't simply create object of it. So the way you can, what you can do here is, uh, you can basically pass the object of authentication configuration. And I will say config. And using this config object, if you can see there are some methods. And one of the method is get authentication manager. So this will give you an object and you as a programmer just need to hold on it. Then that's why we are saying bean, right? So I can simply ask for authentication manager object in any of the classes and I will get it. But it might throw an exception, that's what it's saying. So I will say, okay, add throws exception, I'm happy with it. I think we have to return this, so return. So this is working. So that is the first step. We want to get, we wanted to get the hold on authentication manager. And authentication manager will talk to authentication provider. That's the flow. And now what's the next step? See, we are able to register the user. So if you go to your user controller, and that we have done this in the earlier videos, uh, you can basically do registration, right? So you can create new users. And everything is working out. Basically, when you say register, we do have a way to register the user in database, and we are also making sure that we are using a bcrypt password encoder to save it. That's for the registration, but what for the login? See, by default, if you don't implement the thing which we have done now, which is the authentication manager, behind the scene, it will take its own flow. What I want to do is I want to have my own flow. So I, I want to create a login option, something like this. So if a user says a URL slash login, they should be able to do that. So I will say public. I want to say if the lo login is successful, and I will say login, in which it will pass you the object of users. So I will say users, user, and I have to say request body, and let's return success. At this point, I'm not checking if the user is valid or not, I'm just saying success. And for this, I need a post mapping URL because we are accepting data. And here I will say login. So when someone sends a login request, this method should be called and it should say success. And that's what I want, nothing fancy. I will just relaunch this. I mean first run this and open my postman. First of all, I want to know in database what are the fields we have. So we can see we have Naveen and I forgot the password. It should be Naveen uh, n123. I hope there's a password. Anyway, postman will tell me was the last thing. Okay, we have used that last time. Now I want to send a post request for the login. Okay, and maybe, you know, the better thing would be also to print the data we are getting here. So let me print the user as it is. Let's relaunch. Okay, let's go back to the postman. And here I have to specify the basic auth. Even if you don't do that, I think we have done it for the login, if I'm not wrong. Uh, we have made sure that it should not stop login. Oh, okay, okay. So we have not done that yet. See, the thing is, uh, whenever you try to access any resource, the thing which we do is we basically make sure that uh, you pass a username and password and we are doing that from a long time. In the postman, basically we were sending this authorization, right? Even for the registration. So if I want to add a new user, I have to pass, I have to pass some authentication, basic auth. Basic auth. And even for students, if you want to fetch students, you have to do that. But don't you think for the login and for the registration, we should not do that. We don't need to do that. Uh, so can we skip certain things as open resource and everything else as a close because by default if you see everything is closed Every, any request will be authenticated so what i can do is i can free up i can say hey there are two links which i want it uh, which i want i don't want to implement security on so i want them to be permitted so once we got the request object here just say enter and here so before the any request you can say request matches and you can pass the patterns here. So I don't want it for the register and I don't want it for the login. So for this two URLs, it will skip it. How? You have to say permit all. So when you say permit all, that means this will be permitted and then any other request will be authenticated. That's how you differentiate between open links or the closed resources. Okay, so let's restart. So now if you want to register a user, it will basically not check for your uh, credentials. You can simply skip them and you can add a new user. But now when I say login, I don't want to pass the auth, but in the body, I want to pass something, not this. I want to pass certain things. Uh, I want to pass the ID first of all. So I will say, I want to pass the ID. ID should be new. Uh, we already have, let's let's start with 11 because I'm not sure what's the last time, last ID there. Uh, I will say username. And how do you know this field? These are there inside your users. If you can see, we got three fields here. So username, new username I want to add is, let's say, Goli. And the password is G at the rate one, two, three. Okay, so we got this detail. And when I click, click on send, it should be login. And you can see we got success. 
Let's verify if you are getting that on the console. So you've got this object. So this is working till this point. Now we want to actually do the login, right? How do you verify the user is logged in or not? In that case, I don't want to print login now. Uh, what I can do is I can ask my service layer to verify. We don't want to do that, right? So I can return and here I can ask my service to verify the user. It's that simple. If if the if the service class says done, if it is a real user, you will get that text. If it is a wrong user, you will get that text. Right? As simple as that. But we don't have this method, so I will just click here and I will say create a, a method verify, and we have to verify it here. Now, question arises: How you are going to verify? That's a big question, right? Uh, because if you see the flow before this. Login was happening automatically because of the authentication manager behind the scene. It was working, and now we are changing a flow, right? So in that case, we already got authentication manager object. I can simply get that object here and pass the request to it. So I can say authentication manager. We got the hold on it. Uh, I will say auth manager. And once you got this object, I can come back here and I can use that object. But using that object, what you will get? See, ultimately you want auth authentication, right? So to do that, I will simply use authentication. Uh, authentication is equal to, and using the auth manager, I can say authenticate. But how will you authenticate? What you want to authenticate? So whatever this user details are, I want I want to authenticate. See behind the scene, we have written all the logic to for the authentication, right? We have mentioned that we have authentication uh, provider who will verify the database. I just have to call them, and to do that in this authenticate, I will just enter that here so that I can read it. You can pass the object of because if you see authenticate, it needs the object of authentication. Okay, a lot of authentication there. So what you are passing now is unauthenticated, and what you will get is authenticated. But both are the same class object. It's like you're sending a box without the stamp, and what you get in return is a box with a stamp. So to do that, I will use a class called user password authentication token. In this, you have to pass two things: the username and the password. So you will say user dot get username and user dot get password. So we we want to pass these two things. And what this will give you is the authentication object. And once you got this object, I can verify if you are authenticated. If the if the user is real, so it's authenticated dot is authenticated. This will return true or false. And I just have to check if it is authenticated. I can return success. Else I will return not even else. I will say return. I can throw the exception as well. Yeah, but I would say return failure. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is behind the scene, all the verification of the user is correct or not is happening. Okay, it's just that we are taking the control of login. So when when you say you are passing username password, we are manually verifying it. We are asking the authentication manager, hey, we got the details. Take this detail and let me know if the user is logged in or not. And we have done all the hard work before. We have done all this hard work before. Right. So now uh, this should work. Let's try if this is working. So I will just restart this and go back to Postman. Literally check it. So we don't have to pass ID when you are verifying it, right? So now I will click on Send, and it should give you 401 because this is a wrong username password. Let's pass something real. So I will say Naveen and Naveen at the rate one two three. So Naveen and N at the rate one two three. Send. It's it works. You can see we got success. If I give a wrong password and we got failure. Uh, in fact, it's not printing it here, but yeah, that's what we got. It's basically throws an exception, and you got this error here. The thing is, earlier also we were doing login. In fact, we were even we never tried login, right? We are just using this URL now. Uh, we were accessing the resource by passing the authorization, but now I'm actually logged in, and I'm not passing any auth from here. Now what I want to do is, we are getting success, but actually we don't want success. What we want is, if I example, if I run this, and if I get the success, I don't want success here. I want to generate a token which I can use later. But the question is, how will you generate token? That's a big question. So instead of returning a success here, I want to generate a token. So we can do that, right? It's very simple. I can say uh, generate token. So this method should return me a token. And the beauty is actually not beauty. Uh, maybe I was you were thinking that there might be some method and magically it will give you a token. Uh, no, we have to generate the token by ourselves, and we have to create this method. I can do that in the same class, okay? In the user service, I can do that. But I want to keep the JWT stuff apart from the user service. So what I will do is, in the service package here, I will create a class for the JWT service. And in this class, I want to have that method. So first of all, I will say this is a service layer, and go back to the user service, and create the object for that here. 
so I'll say private JWT service service or JWT service and on top of this I will say at auto wired now using this JWT service I want to say dot generate token and we don't have that method there so what I can do is I can just go there here and say create a method and this method should return the token okay but how will you generate token it's easy actually you can go to the browser remember we went to this website I don't know where, the, where my chrome is gone okay so browser is here and if you remember we went to this website and this is a token right a random token but this should work at this point maybe you can generate a random token anytime you want so let's say I want to say this is for Naveen this is for this subject token refers to okay I will just keep it empty or whatever default is and this is the expiry I will just use this token and paste it here that's it we got the token right I know that's a big text but we got the token let's restart this and go back here click on send okay so we're not started yet send okay we got the token okay so ultimately we got token right but there's one little problem this is not the actual token I mean this is a token but not the valid token reason first of all it is expired right this, this is 2018 one and second doesn't matter who the user is all the user will get the same token this is the one of the biggest security breach right yeah someone is logged in and then you are using the same token to access some other resource we want to generate token for users different users different tokens how that's something we'll see in the upcoming videos but at this point we know we have done with the flow okay we know a lot of different stuff now what is happening we, the only thing you have to do is generate this token you might be thinking that easy no multiple classes are there so the code is not that easy but if you be with me and practice it together it becomes easy so see in the next video where we'll actually generate this token for different users or different I mean different tokens for different users bye bye